All right, shall we start? Uh, thanks everyone for coming to this session. It's exciting to be able to present a session in DrupalCon. It's an event that uh, means a lot to us as a community. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, debugging your PHP applications. Uh, hopefully, this is going to be a little bit more practical than usual. So, um, and we're not going to go just over uh, PHP debugging. We're going to go over um, S trace and uh, how to look into what your PHP application is actually doing. So um, let me present myself first. I'm Felipe Fidelix. I'm UK Business Development Manager for Platform Sage, a uh, continuous delivery hosting company. Um, we are doing uh, some pretty interesting stuff in the hosting space. If you have uh, complicated needs for your applications and you're not running uh, just Drupal if, because Platform SH can run pretty much uh, anything that's PHP based, uh, Node.js, Python, Ruby, Go, and very soon Java. Uh, so uh, we're going to start by debugging by using the, uh, uh, the simple, the quick, dirty way that uh, a lot of you are probably already familiar with. And then, then we're going to go over step-by-step -step debugging, which uh, allows you to have a lot more control over what you're looking and uh, requires a lot less iteration to find the stuff that you're looking for, the bugs or whatever you're looking for. We're going to also uh, do some profiling. Uh, <coughs> profiling is the when you're doing you uh, basically generate a trace of uh, an application request, and then you are able to analyze that trace to see how your application is doing and what's taking uh, most time, what's, uh, which, which bottlenecks your application may have, so it can help you debug performance problems. We're also going to go over S trace, like I said, to uh, debug your application real time. It's uh, fantastic for debugging stuff uh, in production. Uh, it's an invaluable tool to use in production. We're going to uh, just glance over HTTP traffic monitoring. We're not going to go too deep here, but uh, it might be useful uh, when you have uh, JavaScript interactions in your application and uh, when you have sub requests in your PHP application. And of course, uh, in the world we live in today where we're all running applications in the cloud, uh, it's very important to be able to debug your stuff in the cloud as well, not just uh, in your local environment. So we're going to go over that uh, as last part of the session. Uh, if at any time, you have any questions, you please uh, come over to the microphone. I'm not going to wait until the end. I think uh, it's going to be better for this type of session if you just come over to the microphone and ask uh, at any point. So feel free to, to do that. All right. Uh, the first thing that uh, you might want to do as you're developing in Drupal 8 and you want to see what's inside a variable what, or you want to see what's going on in a page is actually to use uh, kint and the dump uh, methods. They uh, are really useful to if you don't have xdebug installed or you, you just want to do some quick, dirty debugging. Um, you basically run, you basically write uh, kint and then Inside the function, you put the variable you want to look at. You can also do something like a get uh, available variables to, as a PHP function to actually look at all defined variables. Uh, the syntax for that is something like this.
if I can spell properly, get defined vars. This will uh, print, oh, it's a little hard to see, isn't it? Hopefully it's a little better. Uh, so this function here will basically get all the variables that are defined at this moment in the runtime of your process, and it will uh, pass those variables to the kint function, which will print a pretty Save this. Let me open the rush. <clears throat> it will print these variables in an array for you. Here. Apparently there are no variables here, hold on. Kint is not able to access this. Let's try with server. So here are, here's everything that's inside the server variable and uh, Kint prints it in a, a pretty way for me. Kint is a library that actually uh, handles all of this. Kint comes with a Devo module, uh, which you should have if you're debugging anyway. You can click this button here to open it in a new window because uh, sometimes because of the layout of the page, you're not able to easily see the variables here and look at them, especially if you have CSS that's changing the uh, the color of the font. So you might want to click uh, this button. It will open everything in the new page and it will allow you to actually search and uh, filter your everything for you. You can also, uh, using, you can drill down here. It's gonna tell you the size of each uh, directory. So that's pretty neat. And if you're using uh, Twig, you want de to debug your Twig variables, uh, the function for that is a dump. It will uh, help you uh, actually see your Twig variables. And uh, you also might want to use this module. It's really, really useful for seeing what's running and what's actually happening in your runtime. So let's give it a try. Oh, if it doesn't break. Well, web profiler apparently doesn't like me. Let's try one more time. There you go. So here's the web profiler bar. Uh, it will give you some pretty useful information as well, if you, uh, especially if you don't have Xdebug 
uh, available. Most of these are available in Xdebug, but a lot of them aren't, especially, uh, so the query time, this is extremely useful. If you want to check, uh, if you have some specific pages with bottlenecks, uh, you can see the number of database queries, and if you click on it, you can actually see the database queries that happen in your page. So if, you're, if you are familiar with uh, how this used to work in the devil module in um, Drupal 7, this is a lot better. It's a lot cleaner, uh, it's a lot faster, so it should be very useful. And you can see the patterns of the queries, the queries that took uh, the longest to execute. So it's really good to debug performance problems if you have pages that are uh, taking too much to uh, generate the first byte. And it's also going to show you here in the performance timing, the time to first byte, which is something you really want to check for your applications even if uh, your application is, has a CDN behind it and you, you're caching it well with varnish or, or whatever, the time to first byte is important because uh, some users, the users that don't actually touch the cache, whether they, because they're authenticated or because uh, the cache uh, has expired, after, um, they're gonna hit this time to first byte so it's important that uh, you keep this low. And of course, it will give you lots of, lots of information about your runtime, uh, the extensions that are uh, running, the blocks that rendered in this page, which is also super useful, uh, the extensions that are being uh, enabled on this site, and uh, the cache calls, which is also really good to check uh, if your site is being effective when it comes to caching. Uh, if you have a high hit ratio, it means uh, things are get getting cached properly. Cache is not, invalidating to, not being validated too often. So that's good. And the assets and the regions in which uh, they're being loaded from. Uh, Let's go back. So that was Web Profiler. Uh, it opens this small bar on every page for you. Now, the really interesting part, which is how to use um, Xdebug. Um, I included a link here to the documentation on how to install PHP Storm, um, Xdebug with uh, PHP Storm. I'm not gonna go over the installation here, but uh, it shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, there are a bunch of tutorials online on how to do it, but uh, one thing that is probably good for you to understand is that PHP, uh, Xdebug, step-by-step uh, -step debugging with Xdebug it just trumps every other way of debugging. Uh, and if you have it configured in a way that uh, doesn't generate a lot of hassle for you to actually get it running, uh, and you start using it um, as part of uh, your, your daily tasks, and it, it, when it becomes natural to you, you will never want to go back to using Kint or dump or var dump, for God's sake. Uh, you will always want to use Xdebug, even when you're on the cloud, even when, when you're working remotely, because Xdebug can actually debug sites remotely and um, do step-by-step -step debugging, which I'll show you how. Uh, this is basically the most important configuration you need to do for um, Xdebug and Drupal. Uh, especially if you're running a composer-based uh, Drupal project because the Drupal directory is outside of the, sorry, the dependencies are outside of the 
web root, so, and the Drupal root is not in the root of your repository of your project. So it's uh, really important for you to use settings like this. And uh, these Mac simultaneous connections are also excellent uh, if you're running, you're running Drush and you want to uh, debug Drush commands and uh, cron and whatever because by default text debug we only do one connection and Drush executes everything in a sub request which, count, which counts as a secondary connection. So if you don't do this, Drush, and you are running your site in, using Drush, you won't actually be able to deploy, uh, sorry, to debug your application if you don't increase the number of simultaneous connections. Um, so yeah, you might want to set your settings, something like this. Right, so debugging with uh, Xdebug is a very simple process and uh, really gets very natural once you start uh, doing it a few times. Uh, basically, you set a breakpoint using your, your IDE. Uh, most decent IDEs, they have uh, an, an easy key, uh, an easy shortcut or even a, just a mouse click in the, neck, in the side of the line where you can set a, a breakpoint. A breakpoint is the point of the uh, request where the IDE will pause completely You're, and the PHP server will just stop executing so that you can look, do what you have to do and then you can let it, run, let, let it uh, continue running if you want to or you can just break the request and stop it. That's fine as well. Uh, after you set the breakpoint, uh, which is just one keystroke or just a, a, a mouse button away in most IDs, you will just um, set your ID to start listening to connections uh, and then you just run your page as usual. Uh, let's just give it a try here. So this is this exact page, right? And uh, I want to know what, uh, just give me a sec, I'm actually gonna use a more complicated page. I want to know which arguments are being loaded in this page. Uh, page example. So this is the page, it uses arguments here on the page and um, I want, to, I want to actually see in the code which arguments are being passed to this function. So I can just set a breakpoint here or here and I will set my IDE to start listening to connections. You can also put a shortcut here if you want or just leave it enabled as well. You can do that. So it starts listening as soon as you open the IDE and it's not, it's not just PHP Storm that can do this. There are a bunch of IDEs out there that can uh, do this as well. Uh, so after I set the breakpoint, uh, essentially what I have to do is uh, just load the page. Now the page stopped executing. It didn't load, I pressed Control R, but it actually stopped loading. Uh, and I can just come here and I can see that these, these are the, all the variables that are available at runtime at this point. Uh, there's the first variable which is defined here, second, and uh, everything else that's defined, I can take a look, I can explore. I can also copy the values as a JSON, even so if it's a big array, uh, you can, there are a bunch of options here to copy and you can also, which is very a very neat part of uh, PHP Storm is that you can set watches. Uh, what a watch lets you do is uh, you will basically always 
you will always show the value of a certain variable at the top of the, this list. Uh, it might not seem useful here, because you can already see the value of second here, but if you have if you have a variable that's deep inside an array, so let's say server, and uh, it's, I have to scroll a lot, so let's say it's here, at watches. And then you all, it will always show me the value of server request time here at the top of this list. So even if you keep uh, moving, and go to other functions, to other methods, uh, it will always keep showing this value for you. It's really useful when you're doing recursive functions, when you're doing deep nested functions, uh, and I'm sure that if you start using Xdebug, you will start using it as well uh, sooner or later. Um, right, so again, I am here, and uh, this is the highlighted line that uh, PHP Storm is showing for me, it means that execution stopped here. Uh, if I press uh, F8 or I click the, step over button, uh, it will go to the next line, the next uh, statement, uh, and if I keep press F8 again, it goes to the next statement. And you can keep following your code and reading everything that happens, and actually seeing the variables defined here, so I can go to the next function, which is this one, right? And you already show me, it's still showing the server request time here because I set a watch, and uh, it's still showing me the, all the variables that are defined, and this, this is not even the same function. So it, it, will, keep, it, it will keep showing you all the variables and uh, everything really that you need to see. And you can just keep following the execution, pressing F8 or the step uh, over button. But there's more. Um, you can also, so if I press, if, if I'm here in this line and I press F8, it will actually go to this line. But what if I want to know what's happening inside this function? Then you can press F7 or step into, uh, and it will go inside this function, right? Uh, and you can see what's, what it's doing. Even the initialization of the class, you're not gonna miss anything. Uh, so I can also look at the dispatch function here. See, dispatch function and I keep, can keep following the flow of the application. Uh, so it's extremely useful when uh, there's a bug that uh, you don't really know where it is and you want to start from the beginning of the execution to actually find uh, the problem. Uh, you can press F9 so it will continue to execute the application until it uh, breaks again in another breakpoint. Uh, that is the same thing as the, this button here, uh, F9. Since there, are, there aren't any more breakpoints for the IDE to break, uh, you will just finish executing it and uh, my page will render just fine. Now, uh, up until this point, you can already see that uh, it's really useful and it's gonna be better than Kint or uh, dump functions to look at stuff. But uh, that's not the best part of Xdebug. Uh, I'm gonna try to show you the best part here now. So here I am, I, uh, it has bro broken again here. It's in this line. But the good thing is that uh, you can also see which function called this function and you can see the entire stack and how, from the beginning, how your, your application flowed and which functions were called, and you can actually go back in time to look at the variables. So I'm here in this function arguments, but 
I want to know where it was called from. How did I get here? How did the application get here? You can just follow the, <coughs> the frames here, which is just another word for, another word for the stack, and uh, you, you can actually go back in time here. And you can look at the, even look at the variables at this point as well. So at any moment in my application, I can see the variables, even if, if I didn't set a breakpoint there. Uh, so you can basically go back in time and look at everything that your application did at this point. See, all the variables are here. Even from the beginning on, on when Drupal bootstrapped, it's all here. So that is a really useful part of uh, Xdebug. Uh, but to use this, you need a good IDE. There aren't many IDEs that support this. PHP Storm is one of these IDEs. Uh, but again, that's not all. Um, you can still do things like, uh, and this is my favorite part, is that you can actually execute code in real time. Uh, there's a console, and in this console, you can actually run PHP. So you can, let's say, <clears throat> You can var dump first, var dump the variable. It's not going to return anything. You can also do so. Any any anything that you can think of in PHP, you can actually run it here. You can define variables, and uh, you can actually modify your runtime. And whatever you're doing here, it's not just uh, something that's happening on the side. It's actually happening in your requests in real time. So you're actually modifying. Uh, your request here. If I type, all right, let's continue. So you can see that the, func the, the var dump that I typed, it actually happened in the page because whatever you do in the console is actually happening on that point in the request. Uh, so you can imagine this is really useful for uh, debugging, let's say you're debugging a user page, and uh, at that moment uh, that the user is being loaded, you also want to modify the user variable. Hey, you know what? I want to test this guy uh, as if he had a, a different role, or I want to test this woman, see if she, if she could be uh, have a different picture. You know, see how a different picture in different resolution looks like. Um, so you could you can modify it during the runtime, um, and it just works. Uh, it's really it's a really a cool part of Xdebug. Um, all right, so let's get back to this. Any questions so far? Just again, feel free to reach the microphone. No? All right. Uh, so, uh, okay, seems we have one question. Uh, you just uh, showed us the console. Great thing, by the way. I was wondering when that was coming up. Uh, but I've ever, actually never tried. Uh, if you go back in the stack and then use the console, does it also work for that? No. no? Why not? <laughs> I'm afraid not. <laughs> the, the way that uh, it looks at the stack is basically just uh, uh, PHP doesn't have a garbage collection mechanism like other languages, a lot of other languages do. So it actually just, uh, Xdebug just stores those variables in memory uh, so that you can look at them. So even though I said that, uh, it's kind of like going back in time. It's not really just PHP, uh, Xdebug. It just stores all those variables for you to take a look at uh, later. But it would indeed be awesome if you could uh, go back in time and execute a, a console commander. Right, so uh, one tricky part of debugging, uh, and you're going to deal with this sooner or later, is that uh, sometimes, uh, when you are running an application, even if, it, if it's on your local server, um, 
your IDE doesn't know where the files actually are. Um, so if you have um, uh, an application in your slash var slash www folder, but your actual development code is not there, it's actually running in a different folder, in your home folder, there is no way Xdebug can know that. It only knows what the server, the PHP server knows. So it will tell you the server, the, the path of the file, let's say index.php, which is where you, you set up a breakpoint. It doesn't know where, uh, PHP Storm doesn't know where in your disk that file, index.php, that the server executed is. It doesn't have any way to know that. That's what uh, path mappings are for. So with the PHP Storm path mappings, you can say, hey, you know what, this folder in my computer is the same folder as this other folder in the server. So uh, you're basically telling, you know what, if this uh, folder here in the server slash var slash www uh, gets called, it's the same thing as my folder in my computer here in my home folder. So you're able to set uh, breakpoints that, that way and even do remote debugging. Uh, and the way that uh, Xdebug and PHP Storm do that is via path mappings. Again, not all, not all IDEs have this functionality. Um, so only the, pretty much the most sophisticated IDEs have this. And if you don't uh, have this functionality, you actually need to put your uh, local development files in, this, in the same absolute path as the server. And sometimes that's not even possible. And yeah, what happens is that PHP Storm, it will look at all your files, let's say I set up a breakpoint in index.php, right? Uh, it will ask you, it will look at all the files in your project that are named index.php and it's going to ask you, hey, where, uh, where is this file in your project? You know what this file in the server was called? Tell me where it is in your server. And um, for Drupal, uh, I selected a slash web slash index.php and then it's able to um, find all the other files in my project. You don't need to really do it again. Uh, you only really need to do it once, and that is uh, a pretty cool feature of PHP Storm and Xdebug. Um, right, so the thing about Xdebug is that the first time you configure it, uh, it's going to be pretty aggressive. It's going to try to debug every single request. It makes everything slow because Xdebug is low, it's a debugging tool, uh, it will make your request lower. Um, so you might not want to enable it every time. Um, and uh, one thing you can do is activate this functionality here where you're, on, you're only going to trigger breakpoints when you put this little uh, query string in your URL, uh, in your address bar of your browser. There's also an option for a cookie, and uh, as you can see here, I'm using this um, add-on, this extension for Chrome. It basically sets the cookie for me so I don't have to go to the inspector and set the cookie myself. But basically what it does is uh, stay, uh, Xdebug stays uh, dormant, and when I, I select this, uh, option here in this extension is actually going to, going to trigger any breakpoints break that I have set. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a, also a neat part and it, it helps you keep things faster. The same thing you can do for, profile, for profiling. Um, I'm going to have to skip this part, unfortunately, profiling. Um, I'm going to have to just glance over it, but basically it generates a trace of your application in a few files, and uh, it stores the exact amount of time each function and each, me each method and each class, the, the amount of time every, each one of these took to execute. So you can find 
any bottlenecks in your application. Um, and then after you generate these files, you need to look at uh, these files from using a tool. Uh, one of the tools that are uh, really good for this, not often used, uh, is kcache grind. It's mostly used for not PHP programs, but for Java or C++ or other types of uh, software, not, not usually PHP, but you can use it for xdebug uh, traces as well. And it will tell you exactly how much time each part of your application took to execute. So it's really, really easy to find bottlenecks this way. You can know, hey, you know what? My application is spending too much time rendering this view or spending too much time talking to this other uh, service, and etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, I listed a few. I'm going to share these slides later, but I listed a few uh, programs here that you can use to analyze these traces. Uh, PHP Storm also has a, a trace analyzer. It's not as good as uh, the other ones, but uh, it's sufficient for a lot of cases. Now, this one is really cool. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of time. So, uh, let me just do this again so you can actually take a look at it because <laughs> it's really fast. It's supposed to be really fast. Yeah, basically we will dump all of the system calls that your application is executing. In this case, I am uh, S tracing. This is a tool that's available for uh, Linux and Mac OS, uh, but there are similar tools for Windows as well. Uh, it will basically dump every system call that your PHP process is doing. And this is an invaluable tool to debug in production because there are no really performance uh, disadvantages of running it, so you can run it anywhere you want. And you can actually see what your PHP process is doing in real time. And you don't need to attach a debugger or anything like that. It just starts printing every system call that it runs. So you can see which files are being loaded. You can see if it's talking to another server, uh, if it's talking too much to MySQL. Um, you can see that if uh, it's wasting too much time on disk, if it's loading too many images. And there are a lot of uh, cool tricks that you can do with asterisk to actually filter uh, this output here. Uh, a few of these tricks are, are listed in my, in the slides. I'm not going to be able to go over them, unfortunately. Uh, but a few of those is uh, follow forks. It's important when you're running PHP FPM and you want to see all the child processes. Uh, there's also dash O if you want to save the output to a file. Uh, AC generates a summary of how long it took to execute and things like that, every, every call. Um, and uh, the best thing is that depending on the service, on the server and on the um, service provider that you use in the hosting company, it, it will actually have asterisk available for you. Uh, Platform Sage is one of those. It has asterisk and a bunch of other tools that you can use to debug. Um, I'm, I am get, going to have to skip this Wireshark part, but uh, Wireshark is a tool that lets you actually look at the TCP uh, and UDP traffic of your uh, network card. Um, it's quite useful 
if you're using, if you if you have to take a look at uh, JavaScript interactions and you're not able to trace everything for some reason. So um, you can also look at the uh, things that Chrome don't actually let you see using the inspector, and Wireshark will let you do that. Uh, and you can also actually intercept the traffic and uh, manipulate it as well. Uh, Charles is a, an HTTP proxy uh, that uh, allows you, uh, the, the, the reason I use Charles is to um, debug when I'm using the, a mobile phone. Uh, so if you're using a mobile phone, you can set the, a proxy in your operating system settings and it will talk to Charles and all traffic will go through Charles and then you're able to actually debug things from there and manipulate uh, traffic and see everything that uh, your mobile phone is doing for that uh, page. And uh, it's, it's a lot better, I'm telling you, than using the remote debugging of uh, the Chrome inspector. Uh, it lets you do a lot of things that uh, Chrome inspector doesn't let you do. Uh, uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of out of time. I was going to uh, talk a little bit more about <laughs> platform message. Uh, how much time do we have? Two minutes? Okay, two minutes then. Uh, <laughs> so platform message is a hosting company that uh, the coolest part is that everything is Git driven. Uh, you do everything via Git. You control which services are available for you. and. Uh, um, you can say, hey, you know what, I want MySQL for this application, I want Solar for this application, uh, I want RabbitMQ, and uh, you define all of that in a few YAML files, you, you should retain a lot of control over the build process, you can run uh, Node.js, so you can compile SAS during the build process, uh, which is not very common, and uh, in, in other hosting companies at least. But you can run Node.js and Gulp and etc. all these tools and image optimization during the build process. And you can have as many environments as you want. Uh, for every Git branch that you create, you get a full environment with a copy of your production data. And uh, that's pretty cool for teams working together. And uh, you can run S-Trace there and PHP debugger and xdebug. They're all really quick. Xdebug is just three lines that you add to the YAML file. You can also run their uh, um, Blackfire. We have integration with Blackfire. You can run New Relic. We also have integration. They're, they're all just a couple of uh, commands away. So th that is pretty neat. Um, all right, questions? Sorry, can you repeat that? Can you, excuse me, can you to tell us more about remote, deb remote debugging with... Uh, remote debugging, yes, absolutely. Uh, so remote debugging in, uh, for instance, in, in, in platform, to do remote debugging with xdebug, you need the xdebug extension installed on the server that's executing PHP. Uh, it's not very, common for you to find that in hosting companies. Uh, platform SH, for instance, you can enable the xdebug extension, and after you do that, you just run this command here in your terminal, your local terminal, and uh, you can run, you can debug your application as if it were local. So it doesn't make any difference for PHP Storm. You would think your application is running locally, but it's actually running on uh, on platform message on the cloud. Um, so you can do everything that I just showed you, and the latency is actually pretty good. It's not slow at all. Uh, it's, it's as good as you can expect. Uh, so that is the way to debug with uh, remotely. Um, by using an SSH tunnel here, uh, I'm sh it, this is basically the command, uh, and then you can do that quite easily in platform message. But again, you need uh, the hosting company needs to have support for XDebug. 
Any more questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Basically, you have to configure Twig to save. You know that Twig gets compiled to PHP, right? So by default, Drupal doesn't save those files. So if you configure Drupal to actually save those files, then you can debug on those files. And there's a yeah, the compiled files. And there's a helper, um, sex debug breakpoints. I think the name the name of the function that. Uh, when your file gets compiled, it will break automatically the xdebug when it gets to that part of your tweak uh, okay. file. So it's, it's, it's like yeah, something like that. Yes. That is correct. Yeah. It's in the services.yaml file. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and also, sorry, apologies. I had a have a bad phone. Uh, so even if you don't set this function, you can actually go there and look at the files and find your tweak file that was compiled and look at all the compiled code. It's not that hard. It's, it's a little hard to read, but if you put it in PHP Storm, we will format it properly for you so it looks okay. And then you can debug it from there. Uh, You're right. uh, sure. Sure. Right. <laughs> only, only eight. Only Drupal eight. <laughs> no, no, only eight oh. oh no! Sorry, that is not correct. The web profiler module is not in project slash web profile. It's it comes with the devil module. Yeah, the, that that uh, it took me a few years using S trace until I found this. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna share the slides. Uh, I'm gonna put them on on the Drupal Con Vienna site, and then you'll be able to see it. But it's yeah, th this is the way to do it if you're using a host that has PHP FPM, which everyone needs to use PHP FPM now. If you're using uh, Apache and mod right, you're wrong. <laughs> so PHP FPM, and you know that the problem with you use PHP FPM is that for every request, it, op it opens a new process. So you'll never be able to find the right yeah. process ID. It's impossible. <laughs> so the way to do it is by debugging the parent process and using the dash F, dash F so which follow, follow, which follows, yeah, yeah follows the folks. <laughs> You're welcome. 